Welcome back guys, we will do in this lab uh, the guided lab introduction to Amazon Elastic File System. Just to explain a few things here, in this lab we will do access the management console, we will create an Amazon Elastic File System and then we will try to mount that Elastic File System into an Amazon EC2 and then we will test the performance of the file system. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create to access the management console. Sometimes give me this error if I was doing up another lab and now I need to access the lab again. Let me just change them to two tabs so I can navigate easily between them. Feel free to start the lab and then access the AWS management console from here. Now the first thing in this lab is to go to the EC2 console and from the AC2 console, we want to go to the security group. But before doing that, just let me show you exactly why we need to do this. We have a running Elastic File System client. And if you look to the security, you will find that there is a security group for the AC2 instance. Now that security group for the AC2 it will be the source of the communication into our security group that we will attach to the Elastic File System. So going back into step number eight, step number seven, it's asking us to copy the security group ID. So I'm going to copy that ID and I will save it here in my text editor. Now I want to go back and from security group i need to create a new one and that security group it should have the mount target which means i'm going to use it for mounting the target i will copy the description and most importantly don't forget to select that this is going to happen in the lab vpc we will add a rule and this rule is going to be the nfs now the source of the traffic is going to be the EC2 security group. So it will be the EC2 client, whether you select from here or you copy the um, security group that we just copied from the previous um, step. Just create a security group and that security group will be used once we create the file system. Now in the next, next task, we will create an Elastic File System. So we are going to go to the Elastic File System console. And then we create a file system. Click on Customize. Now this is, will be a regional by default. You can also select it to be in a one zone if needed. But for this lab, we're going to select it regional in the step 12 and 13 they are asking us to uncheck automatic backup and none for the transition or the life cycle policy then we need to put a tag in the name here and that tag will be name my file first elastic file system name let me copy this from here just to make sure I put the right tag. Now in which VPC? It's going to be in our lab VPC. Now in our lab VPC, as we did in the previous labs, it has a public and a private subnet one and two, and we have a public and a private subnet uh, uh, two. I'm going to select lab VPC to be in a private subnet, and this is where we normally mount the Elastic File System unless our application needs something uh, to access the file system from a public subnet. However, in this scenario here, I need to make sure that I select the correct security group. And this is where the confusion came in this lab. So whether you are going to mount the Elastic File System client, which is basically the EC2 security group, which is not correct in this case, but we are going to use the Elastic File System mount target and we are going to use it in both mount target. <coughs> now click in next <coughs> and then next. 
and then a create. At this step here, my first file system is created successfully. I should be able to carry on with the lab. Now in the next step, we are going to connect to the AC2. So feel free to follow this step if you are using Windows or if you are having a Mac. However, I'm going to use this terminal to connect. As I showed you before, the lab user Vocarium key is located in this folder, CD, in the .ssh folder. So if you do ls, you will find that this lab user pen file is already existed in our system. To connect to it, to our EC2, we need to go back to our EC2 console. And from our instances, we have a running EC2 here. <coughs> Copy the public IP, minus I, pass the name of the pen file, EC2 user, which is the default username for the Amazon Linux AMI, right click and paste the IP address. Click enter, click yes, and now I am able to connect to the EC2 machine. So you can skip all these steps all the way to task four, where we need to create a new directory to mount the file system into our system. So the first thing we need to go in step 40 is to go to the Elastic file system again and select the file system we want to mount and then attach. Now the attach via DNS is going to give us a few, um, uh, basically a few uh, commands to run. In this particular scenario here, they are going to ask us to install the Amazon Elastic File System utility. However, these should be installed by default in Amazon Linux 2, but just to be sure, paste and enter. Now in step 42, we need to create a new folder called Elastic File System. You could call this folder anything, but for the sake of this scenario, we're going to make it the default, which is sudo make directory elastic file system. And now going back to the instruction, we can use the NFS client, not the NFS mount helper. So we'll copy this command and we paste it again in the console. Now this should take a few minutes. And once we finish, we can get a summary of the available disk space that we have, including the mount target we just created of our Elastic file system. So you could verify this using the command df minus ht capital. We would like also to run a flexible IO, which is like a benchmarking tool for Linux, just to see how our file system is behaving. So I'm going to copy this command here and paste it in the new terminal here that I have. And this is will basically uh, generate uh, some output to the file system so we can catch the performance of our file system from the CloudWatch. Uh, the next thing is to basically go back to the services in our file system, which copy this, and now we need to monitor the performance of our file system so you can see more in CloudWatch. This will take us to the file system monitoring page or there, the lab instruction. You need to go to the Elastic File System from here, then select Elastic File System for all metrics, and we get the file system performance. And we need to select the primitive throughput which is this guy here. And this is will show us the current performance of our file system. Uh, <clears throat> you could also finish the navigation in the cloud for a watch based on step number 56. And you can also um, uncheck the box and select all of them and change the graph, for example, to stacked area or numbers or even bars 
based on your um, needs and based on your preferences. So that's it for this lab. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next.